Hi, Seth David here with Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing you yet another free webcast. This is the first new webcast that we're doing in our new blog at nerdenterprises.com forward slash blog. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll post the link, of course, because there you'll find a link directly to the original webcast, which is better quality than what you see in YouTube. And these links here that you see are all live in the original webcast. They're not on YouTube. Today we're talking about how does cash flow. I've worked with a lot of people who own businesses who are very good at doing whatever it is that they do or at selling whatever it is that they sell, but they don't necessarily have the experience in terms of understanding a lot of the accounting fundamentals that I've experienced it's important for a business owner to understand. And that's why I bring a lot of this content to you, is to help you better understand that especially if you own and run a business or for that matter if you're a bookkeeper because being a bookkeeper a lot of bookkeepers don't necessarily understand things at this level and you can be so much more helpful as a bookkeeper if you do so business owners and bookkeepers alike are essentially the people who are going to benefit probably the most from these webcasts so without further ado I'm going to share my screen like I always do and take you on this wonderful journey into the world of how does cash flow share my screen with you in just a second able to take this ride with me desktop it'll let me maybe it'll let me there we go how does cash flow Cash flow is in and out. We all know this. Cash comes in, cash goes out. A lot of us complain. More goes out than comes in. Cash also flows sideways, as in from one account to another. Cash flows in, it can be in many forms. Let's say someone loaned us money, and now we have to begin paying it back. Uh, we made a sale, and someone paid us for it. We made a sale last month. In other words, we recognized there was a receivable, and now somebody is paying us for that. Or we loan someone else money, and now they're paying us back. These are all examples of cash flowing in. Cash flows out also in many forms. We paid for something. We loaned somebody money, or somebody loaned us money, and now we're repaying it. We entered a bill last week, and now we're going to pay that bill. We simply take money out of the company. This is an owner or shareholder distribution. Depending on the transaction and double entry bookkeeping, there are always two things happening, and in many cases, more than two. In some cases, you're actually doing two or more of the above in one transaction. For example, when we repay a loan, there's usually interest involved. So there are three components of the transaction. Cash is reduced by the total amount of the payment. The payment itself is then broken up into two components. The principal, how much are we reducing the liability on the balance sheet, and the interest, which is the expense. That's what it costs us to borrow the money. So let's look at a few examples of what this all looks like in QuickBooks. But in order to show you very clearly the full impact of each transaction on the financial statements, I've created a brand new company file for this webcast. And we're going to take a look at these transactions. And then as we look at each transaction, we're going to look at how the balance sheet, profit and loss, and statement of cash flows are affected. First, a quick overview of the three financial statements. The balance sheet. This is the first one we should always be looking at. The balance sheet is a snapshot, a moment in time look at where we stand in terms of assets, liabilities, and the difference being equity. The report date on that is going to be one day in time, like December 31st, 2009. Profit and loss, a measure of the performance of our company over a specified period of time. This is a look at a period of time and how much revenue we've earned how much we've incurred in expenses, and the difference is our net income for the period. The report is a date range, so January 1st till December 31st is what you'll commonly see. Uh, cash balance, or statement of cash flows rather, is a reconciliation from our net income on the profit and loss to what the cash balance was at the end of the period on the balance sheet. This statement eludes a lot of people. Not a lot of people spend enough time on this and they don't really get it. It took me a long time to understand it, even having an accounting degree. But when you do understand it, you'll also understand why it's the most important and most uh, powerful in terms of its impact on our determinations about how the company is performing financially. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to cover probably just the first few transactions in this free webcast, and then I'll put the entire webcast up for download in our learning center for a small fee. So let's get into things right away. We're looking at a series of transactions that I prepared here. And the first one is we're going to sell $1,000 in services. And that's going to affect the profit and loss and the balance sheet. We're going to record a sale of $1,000, and we're going to have accounts receivable of $1,000 take you over into QuickBooks. We have a new company file. I'm going to create an invoice. Nerd's greatest client. And we're going to come right down here 
services a thousand dollars now let me also before I save this let's run a profit and loss for this fiscal year to date and let's run a balance sheet as of today and notice there's nothing here because this is a brand new set of books I haven't recorded a single transaction but watch what happens as soon as I record this we're going to have sales and we're going to have accounts receivable in one shot Now let's watch as the um, balance sheet refreshes. And here's our accounts receivable, $1,000. And here is our income of $1,000. So that's the first transaction. I'm moving quickly because I don't have a lot of time, and you can watch the recording as many times as you need. Now let's take a payment from the customer. So we're going to receive a payment from Nerd's greatest client. We're going to assume they pay the whole $1,000 with a check. Check one, two, three, four, and it applies it to the invoice because there's only one. It's for the same amount. Now the income is still there, a thousand dollars, but notice accounts receivable is gone, and QuickBooks has put it into a special account called undeposited funds, which means we now simply have to tell QuickBooks, okay, I'm actually going to deposit this thousand dollars today. Save and close, and now we have a thousand dollars in Bank of Nerd. We have no liabilities, nothing else on the on the books, so our net worth is the same thousand dollars that we now have in the account, and we've earned the income of thousand dollars. Let's do I think one more transaction is about what we have time for. So we're gonna borrow ten thousand dollars on a line of credit. What happens when we borrow the money after the paperwork's all done is the bank is going to issue us a check, or they'll give us a book of checks that we can use to write a check and pay money into our checking account. So we're going to skip right to the point of receiving the money we're going to put it in our account bank of nerd or actually I'm sorry I'm going a little too fast here's our bank account here bank of nerd and over here we're going to show that is going into the line of it's coming from rather the line of credit it's coming from another current liability because as soon as I borrow this money it means I have a liability because I have to pay it back so let's go over and look at the balance sheet here. Now, of course, I have $11,000 in cash, the $1,000 I've earned from the services, and the $10,000 that I've just borrowed, which you can see now appears here on the line of credit, $10,000. Notice on our spreadsheet, the only, the only uh, financial statement affected here is the balance sheet. The profit and loss hasn't changed. It still just shows our income of $1,000. There's no expenses, so our gross profit and our net income are still also $1,000. We have time for one more transaction. So let's make our first payment on this line of credit. We're going to write a check. It's going to be a check written to, and let's say we're paying it online. I'll do it as an EFT. We're going to pay bank third. And I like to append the name so I know very specifically what the purpose is. Our total payment is reducing cash for $150. We have interest expense, and then we have the line of credit itself. How much are we reducing the loan by? I've already done the math. Based on 8%, the interest expense would be 6667 And the difference of the payment, or 8333 is what we're paying to reduce the line of credit. So let's hit Save and Close. And now let's take a look at our profit and loss. Now I have an expense. I have interest expense of 6667 And now I owe a little bit less money different by 8333 on the line of credit. I now owe that much less, so my balance sheet has changed. So this transaction has affected both balance sheet and P&L. The full-length webcast, which you can download in our Learning Center, will include the detailed review, including the statement of cash flows. So please visit us at www.nerdenterprises.com and go to the Learning Center, and we will uh, have the product up there most likely by the time you're watching this webcast it will be there and it will be available thank you for watching and please feel free to comment on this post in our blog and I look forward to seeing you on the web